Boogie's Diner, stay tuned. Place with a son. That's what I need. Why did Father want to move into a new house? Very nice, yes. That's how he got mixed up with Michelle's crooked cousin and his friend. They saw the potential in a money tree straight away. So they took Quirk and me captive. Right. I want every leaf a hundred dollar note. Now get on with it. Till Locks, Jenny and Colin came to the rescue. The funny thing was that they thought they saw the robot. But that's impossible because Father got rid of it. We had the last laugh on the crooks, though. Quirk's own ship did the executioner from an old painting. <laughs> Boy, did they get a fright. And we didn't stop there. I'd like to report a major crime. Dad, the note! It's about a company. Now! <laughs> we paid back Michelle for getting us into all the mess in the first place. Get together. Now you boys are going for a nice little ride. Someone's going to have to keep an eye in full time. I've got a school project to finish. It'll have to be you. Make your play. But David's so jealous already. No. If he sees me with locks, he'll kill me. Led's the only thing critters like you understand. Can't Colin look after him? Oh, that's fine. We've got him on to cowboys. But I've got to help Mother to get everything ready for the fashion show. You'll just have to take him with you. And you can help, Quirk. No, sorry, I can't. Ah, uh, this is urgent. What are you doing that's so important? Oh, nothing, just stand, do you? Channel 3, good afternoon. Yes, putting you through. Channel 3, good afternoon. Yes, certainly, putting you through. Can I help you? Channel 3, good afternoon. <laughs> I'm sorry, um, yes, certainly. It's all about a shootout in a pitch black barn. So the Duke crawls along on his belly like a snake through the dark. I had hoped this wouldn't be the case. Estrella, this has got to stop. I can't stand it any longer. Oh, don't be silly, David. You stand to put a mess in with you, ma'am? Why can't you talk properly? This is real life. Come on, David. Come on. Let's go outside. I should have asked him to make his play. Yeah, I know. I, I'm sorry, Estrella. I'm just a jealous guy, I suppose. I'll come around just as soon as I finish. Promise? Promise. Just let me know if it gives you any more trouble. If anybody's having trouble, Logs, it's you. Hello, everybody. How is the agency? What? What's that smell? Oh, Quick, 
I'm taking a break, shush. As you recall, What's so fascinating? Shush. An unknown energy source located far beyond the galaxy, brighter than a quasar and codenamed Futon. And today we have our own little mystery. Me. The panel of experts had already decided on a winner till this morning, when an anonymous late entry changed all that. Deep Space's thesis arrived this morning, and it has won first prize. Deep Space originally gave an address, then erased it. But one of our panel is a forensic scientist, so we know where you live, Deep Space. Wonder why they didn't give the name. Finding the number now. Let's hope we can get through. It's ringing. Mortimer Jackson. Hello, this is Robin Quester from the Weekend Science Show. I'd like to talk to Deep Space. Uh, Deep Space? <laughs> well, you'd need some sort of uh, satellite link up for that, wouldn't you? <laughs> this is the Jackson residence. No, I'm after the person who submitted the revolution. Oh, I'm sorry, you've got the wrong number. And won a thousand dollars. No, you've got the right number. So, you're Deep Space, Mortimer Jackson? Uh, well, for the uh, purpose of the prize, I'm really... Very flexible. Your thesis on futons has the scientific panel absolutely over the moon. So, would you be able to collect your prize money tomorrow? Well, let's not draw this thing out. I'll pick it up now. A humorist as well as a scientist. Now we'll give you your thousand dollars after you've delivered your futon paper to the Astrophysics Society on network TV. I still don't see what the problem is. I mean, it's only some silly old science show. Whereas I have three Paris buyers coming tomorrow and nothing to show them. The problem is, Mother, the quirk they're not thinking as usual has put us all in danger. All I wanted to do is to explain what a futon is. So you could go on national television as an eight-year-old astrophysicist? I didn't know about that part. And besides, what does it matter? Whatever's going on now anyway. <sighs> How much do you think Father knows about quasi-stellar light sources? Has he what? There's only one way to deal with this. How? Quirk will just have to coach you. So as you can address the Astrophysics Society tomorrow. <laughs> Why don't we just age simulate Quirk into Father? Brilliant! Dovish, you're a genius! Please, let's just have one genius at a time, shall we? Now remember, our powers are fading the longer we stay here. What if Quirk simulated back to himself on national television? Is that likely? It's possible. So, Quirk, you've got till noon tomorrow to teach Father all you know about futons. <sighs> right. I suggest you start straight away. Okay. Come on, Father. I assume you've heard of an electromagnetic wave. Of course. Describe it to me. I said I've heard of it. I've no idea what it is. I suppose you'd like some help too? Oh, no. I'll just show the Paris buyers the patterns and ask them to pretend. You can't just order some more cloth and have the designs made up again? Do you know how long it took me to get that material? It was meticulously dyed to match Zergon colours. It'd take weeks. What if we kinetize some material down from Zergon? X has strictly forbidden that sort of thing, haven't you, X? Haven't you, X?
why does P equal MC squared? What? Are you sure this is right? A little two looks much better next Just to the M. Just have to memorize this theorem, Baba. <laughs> Morning. Oh, is it tomorrow already? <laughs> I was hoping it was still yesterday. How are we looking? Hopeless. He's oh, never yes. going to be ready in time. Yes, yes, this one to answer the questions. But he has to. What if I lost my voice? And I spoke instead. <laughs> Like one of those, those men with the funny puppets. Um, variable B equals... Equals Bouton X. <laughs> I think they tell the difference. Suppose. Although, if they're not going to hear me, can't hear you. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hey! Clear as a laser bell. Very flat quirk. Oh, uh, it's just a matter of finding the right frequency. What's that? A taxi. Don't worry. You almost have to be right next to it. Oh, pardon. I have been finding it in the directory. It's not an idea. How would you kids like a hamburger at that fast food place with a Scottish name, eh? Yeah? Some other time, yeah. thanks, Father. I yeah. think we better go straight to Channel oh. 3. Oh, I've got a very bad feeling about this. It'll be a pushover. The scientists here are so backward. really was badly adjusted. Father, we'll be late! I'm surprised you didn't notice, X. Rear vision mirrors are very important, you know. Uh, you go on in. Uh, start without me. I I'll come along later. We can't start without you. This is live television. Come on, Father. Crook, we're really just going to have to face it, you know. I'll never pass myself off as an oh. astro whatever. You see, there's, there's something I've never told anyone. I cheated during my Zergo science exams. All of them? Well, no. I, uh, there was one I didn't. I paid somebody to sit in for me. Father, you can't pull out now. Stick to the plan. You'll be all right. You memorized the lecture path, and you're wired for question time, and I'll be sitting right up the front. What can go wrong? Oh, believe me. I could make anything go wrong. Oh, oh, I've forgotten. I've forgotten the opening sentence already. Remember, the shiny red truck loves candy wheels. That's sound, radio, TV, lights and cosmic waves. Come on. Right. Shiny sound, red radio, truck. Was the rear vision mirror adjusted, by the way? Now that comes. I... Welcome back to the Weekend Science Show. So let's get straight down to it, shall we, and hear what we're all waiting to hear. Mortimer, what is a futon? Um... Oh, no. Um... Uh, come on, come on, don't be shy. You, use the screen. Oh. Perhaps... the best way to describe it would be to think of the electromagnetic wave spectrum uh, with its um, sound, radio, TV, and, and uh, cosmic wavelengths, and then at the very top, photons. Could you bring me that bolt of material? I'll get it. Here we go, Estrella. <laughs> He's crazy. Absolutely crazy. I've got to get these down to the agency so the models can be fitted. They'll need to be pressed first. I'll with that. 
No, no. Um, you've done quite enough already <laughs> to help. In other words, every time we think a thought, the very small electric current which passes through our brain cells causes a tiny electromagnetic wave to radiate out into space. And eventually, it's bright enough for us to see on our telescopes as photons. Thank you. And thank you, Mortimer, for that wonderfully lucid explanation, which leaves me only to say, any questions? He goes. Uh, Professor Goody, I was curious to know why we haven't ever detected photons before. Mortimer. Um, because we haven't had the instruments. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm... Um, he hasn't got it turned um, on, it's still switched off. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm um, a little hard of hearing. I was wondering why we haven't ever seen photons before. Photons before. Oh, well, the answer to that's very simple. We haven't had... Ham, olives and mushrooms. Uh, sorry. Uh, to Riley Street, Westbridge. What? Uh, that, that is, um... Capriccioso with no anchovies. I think that's must be a the uh, What I mean is... <laughs> marinara with the lot. Uh, I think perhaps... With extra garlic. And we'll be back after this message from our sponsors. Why are you doing this? I'm very sorry. We're not doing it on purpose. Well, are you a scientist or not? Well, well, it's a very recent thing. I'm a chef, actually. But people didn't come here to hear a pizza recipe. If you don't get out there and talk about futons, I'm ruined. I'll be condemned to host quiz shows or late night weather. And you may very well be charged with false pretenses. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly. Uh, stand by, everybody. Coming up in ten. And five, four, three, two. Now, ready, are we? Welcome back to Weekend Science after that small technical hitch. And if we could try a question from the audience. Yes. I wonder if Mr. Jackson can clarify one small point. How is it that the photons are able to create such energy? Uh, sorry? When the thought waves collect in one spot, how are they able to reinforce each other? Huh. Well, the reason I ask is because I too developed such a theory many years ago, except I concluded it was impossible for the very reason that all thoughts are positive or negative in their nature. If we could have a camera on this gentleman, you mean good thoughts and bad thoughts? Exactly. And when each of these thoughts meets up out in space, they neutralize each other. And not reinforce each other after all? No. In other words, photons could not possibly have been created in this way after all. <laughs> Indeed. In fact, my own humble research would suggest it a metaphysical impossibility. Well, Mr. Jackson, what would you say to that? Mr. Jackson? Mr. Jackson! What's wrong, Mother? The models. What? They took one look at the acrylic and decided it might be radioactive. Oh, that's silly. So acrylic's only got a high luminosity factor. It's perfectly harmless. Yes, well, they've just put a ban on the whole range until it's cleared by the health department. And bad news travels fast. The venue has told us to find somewhere else. Oh, that's not fair. Oh, it's so disappointing to have everything finally ready on time and have to cancel now. Where can I find two exquisite people willing to model clothes for five hours? Hey! 
What about me? Well, you're only one person, Lox. And Estrella. Right. Well, what about a venue? Somewhere to stage it? I know. Where on the planet did he get to? He was the one that got us into all of this, and he just disappeared. I thought the metaphysical impossibility angle was a nice touch, don't you? Let me introduce myself. Professor Jackson Quirk, at your service. But what we thought we'd lost what you. you doing? Robin Quester gave me a lift home. I saw you waiting for me outside, but I couldn't stop, of course. But I think it's been worth it, though. Now, who wants an ice cream? Triple header, chocolate dip, the lot on me. <laughs> and now for those formal occasions. And formal no longer has to mean dull. You can look your best at the opera or a ball and still turn heads. Still make your own personal fashion statement in a Zycro suit. Great. It was enough. <laughs> well, hey. what a day of triumphs it's been. Lox and Estrella here tonight, and Father creating such a sensation on national television. <laughs> it was very productive, wasn't it? Eh? Now, I have a rather important announcement to make. If I could have your attention, please. Just to say thank you all for your help today. And I don't know how we did it, but we did. <laughs> <laughs> and to let you know that it went over so well, I've been invited to take the entire collection to Paris next month. <laughs> 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 that means I'll have to learn French then, doesn't it? Well, well, I was going to speak to you about that, Father. Unfortunately, there's only been one invitation. Oh. But I knew you'd understand. And you're going? Well, of course. It's the opportunity of a lifetime. Without us? Oh, I'm sure you can do without silly old me for a while. <laughs> Can't you? <Yeah. laughs> Stay tuned, there are mysteries to be solved next in The Adventures of Tintin. That's followed at 5.30 by Consumer Comedy in Boogie's Diner.